Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, welcome to uh, a very important show on evolution. I'm here with Sabur Ahmed. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. You're right. Good. You're good. Hi guys. I'm going to look at a Muslim apologist by the name of Sabur and what he does, how he does, and why he does what he does. Based on a recent video, The Academic Problems of Darwinian Evolution, shown on a channel called Muhammad Hijab. Remember, I'm unable to properly voice my opinion or express my disgust at this disgraceful performance because this is YouTube where lies and deceit are welcome to stay on, but those who criticize dishonest charlatans are silenced, their videos removed. So I will deliver a toned down analysis of this video and the persons in it. And just a quick reminder, these are Muslim apologists, right? Where this subur uses technical terms in a strange way and in many ways demonstrates that he does not really understand biology and anything scientific. What he can do, however, is quote a person what they wrote in what sentence on what page in Book X published by, and this was, of course, a secular atheist. <laughs> but he does not understand the contents. It's what to think and not how to think. And that's what we see again and again. Let me start off with the why. This Subur fellow is a Muslim, a Muslim apologist, full of ancient superstitions and misconceptions. He does not keep his childish beliefs to himself, but actively tries to persuade others to believe the same nonsense he believes. He's decided not to use positive arguments or benefits of spirituality within his archaic belief system, but he, he wants to use emotions to negatively smear scientific findings he does not like. In spite of having been schooled, educated, ridiculed and updated, he stubbornly refuses to accept reality. He focuses on only one thing, and that is using quote minds to try and undermine these scientific findings, which turns out to be as effective as using a spitball against a harvester. And he thinks that finding a mistake within the theory of evolution will magically validate his favorite creator God. Because there's this old book which mentions this imaginary super being which claims it is the best of all creators, yet fails left, right and center when building people according to specs. It is beyond his mental capabilities to accept that non-Muslims like me are not non-Muslims only due to the theory of evolution, and that even if the scientific explanation of biological evolution were to be completely wrong, this would not affect my belief regarding the existence of gods, not one bit, and would definitely not make his book of magic into a viable explanation of how species have arisen and adapted to their environment. So even the complete failure of the man-made explanation of evolution would not automatically elevate his Islamic fairy tale monster into a real thing. And even if it did, this would not automatically make me worship this thing. Is that difficult to understand? Now, turning to what, 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 now the what, so turning to what our little troll does, I found that what he does is he's frantically trolling the internet just to find snippets and sentences which in his eyes somehow criticize or challenge the theory of evolution because he, in his limited Muslim apologist mind, does not comprehend what science is all about. And he thinks someone challenging an idea is a bad thing, when in fact it is positive and the essence of what at the end of the day makes science work. Now what he does, and this is what he does constantly, is present a lot of names with quotes of what they allegedly said. And then, following in the footsteps of his mentor and idol Hamza Tsortsis, he challenges academics and experts, and just like Hamza, gets cut down to size, has to suffer humiliating defeats and is only met with raised eyebrows, shrugs, face palms and an occasional lull. While any educated person will ignore this ignorant yapping clot, his fellow Muslim apologists cheer him on as champion of anti-Darwinism, Darwinist being the equivalent of an evil devil-worshipping cult, or something like it at least. And his rather primitive approach is always the same. Quote mining, two, copying Christians, three, shifting burden of proof, and four, asking for evidence when no claim is being made. The shabby shuffle. Okay. 
Let's go down one level and see how he does this using the video I mentioned. So the Muslim apologist on the right, complete with a, I don't know, with a winter sledge riding cap or what this is supposed to be, wants to know something about a scientific topic, developmental biology, and of course, evolution. So instead of going to an expert, he turns to another Muslim apologist, Awa Subur, who, as we shall see, does not understand science either, who does not understand biology and who has no clue what evolution is all about. One of the researchers at AIRA, and we're going to be discussing um, Darwinian evolution. He's introduced as a researcher at AIRA, the Islamic Education and Research Academy, where there's no education, no research and nothing like an academy. All they are is Islamic, and they have a need for lots of money. And in the video description box, they use clever and important sounding words like epistemological, even though this is absolutely no bearing here whatsoever. Okay, the video goes on to specify that they will be talking about Darwinian We're evolution. We're discussing hmm. um, Darwinian evolution. I don't quite understand why. As we know today in the 21st century that Darwin was a kind of a kickstarter, much like Gottlieb Daimler started off cars. And while the new S-Class Daimler has little in common with the first Daimler, there are some basic commonalities, just as is the case with Darwin and what he proposed almost 200 years ago. Darwin simply provided the simple, plausible explanation, the mechanism. Now, biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, they're just examples of how we've expanded and are including different mechanisms today, all based on the scientific method and in use worldwide as a robust and extremely well-documented and substantiated scientific theory. The term Darwinism, I mean, if you must make an area of scientific study into an ism, is just that, that tiny bit which explains what Darwin described. The possible adjustment to an environment by gradual changes through natural selection, which eventually can result in different species. Quite simple, really. Okay, back to the video. We, we get the first question, and I immediately ask myself whether this is a, a demonstration of the level of incompetence and ignorance we're going to encounter throughout the video. How certain are we of Darwinian evolution, and more specifically, I want to ask you, how certain are we that we have the same ancestors as present day, let's say, chimps? Why Darwinian evolution? Why not just evolution? If this clown knows he's going to be talking about a scientific topic and will be asking about evolution, why is he incapable of reading, you know, just a, just a Wikipedia summary, just to get an idea? He would know that same ancestor, in evolutionary terms, a common ancestor, those are very different things. Same ancestors, anc same ancestors, really? Like my grandmother gave birth to a human and then a chimp, or the other way around? There is no sing such such thing as a same ancestor. There's no single point of origin. There's no female suddenly giving birth to a new species. It's a concept, a gradual drifting away, generation by generation, until the differences become apparent and are demonstrable. But the generations leading up to that species can be seen as being either here or there. It's a bit like a boy becomes a man and you can't pinpoint the date and time down to a millisecond as for when this happens. This is not like in the game Sims and things happen a lot slower and more subtle than in a computer simulation game. So much bull nonsense in one sentence. But our biology expert Sabur does not even flinch even saying Brilliant question. I don't think he realizes what he's just been asked. I'm going to show the academics, not me, right. say it is based on a probabilistic framework which has multiple assumptions which are being challenged and its core concepts are disputable. And, okay, here's the kicker, which in my eyes immediately invalidates the entire video. He says he will address the popular layman everyday talk and the academic concerns. So we could actually stop right here because the rest must be nonsense. Now, over the years, biologists have been pestered by zealots without an education, but instead with the God belief, who prefer their fairy tale hero over reality, and have made some really stupid claims, which prompted the experts to dumb it down and explain to these fools why they were wrong and what was wrong with their understanding. And they came up with easy to understand analogies. 
That's why we have different layers of communication here, simply to accommodate those who are not that educated and specialized in this highly complex topic. And now, these very same people, like this Sabor guy, are criticizing these very analogies and the easy-to-understand language. Every normal human can easily understand that science with all its fields is so incredibly vast that no single human can understand every detail of every field. So it necessarily has to be dumbed down, as only specialists in a particular tiny area can research and extract the necessary information to allow a substantial and meaningful conclusion with any degree of accuracy, robustness and reliability. And I suspect that is why, for him, it's all about Darwinists and Darwinism. Why? Why does he inject this emotional attitude? Why can't he simply admit he still doesn't really understand it? Now, what he's doing is basically, well, he's doing nothing. He says he will present what others are saying without explaining why he would compare science and scientific explanations which are incredibly precise and at the same time hesitant and cautious with popular slogans. Okay, He's now comparing this precise language with popular slogans, which are not scientifically accurate at all. So what is the point of this video? Why does he even object to all the evolutionary processes he does not understand? Because others, he claims, are challenging it, as it is limited, without certainty, not absolute truth. I'm going to show the academics, not me, right. say it is based on a probabilistic framework, which has multiple assumptions which are being challenged, and its core concepts are disputed. So what this Muppet does not understand is that he has described some core elements of science and why it is so brilliant and why it works. He does not understand that science never claims certainty like his Muslim mind demands. Uh, Richard Dawkins in The Blind Watchmaker says, Darwin allowed us to be intellectually satisfied atheists. Before yeah, this is quite stupid, it's quite crazy actually, because he says that an opinion by Professor Dawkins influences all non-Muslims, showing what a reduced and limited mind he has. No, you oaf, I don't care if Professor Dawkins says something I don't agree with. I was brought up to learn how to think, not what to think. It was just me and my brain. And here, I just happen to agree with Professor Dawkins, okay? You don't, because you don't even understand what he is saying, I, I think, anyway. And you require someone to think for you so that you can then parrot and misrepresent it. Science merely helps us understand that we don't require gods anymore. Not like when people did not understand nature and created gods who were in control of, I don't know, lightning, waves, the wind and, and earthquakes. We've got a deliberate campaign by humanists, by atheists, by Darwinists to miseducate the public on this particular issue. So, so really Dawkins is miseducating the public using a deliberate campaign? Simply because he does not accept the claims that a magical sky daddy builds human beings? Come on, bring some coherent argument and let's examine them. But in the last 50,000 years or whatever, no arguments have been put forward. Just special pleading, myths, fallacies. And after two minutes out of almost 26, Subo now goes into his favorite extended name drop mode. So these are atheist evolutionary academics. He stresses, for, you, for reasons that are actually beyond me, when someone is not a theist. How that changes anything, I don't quite get. Does gravity vary depending on your favorite flavor of a God belief? I don't know. Is gravity for a Hindu less or more than, than for a Muslim? I actually had him quote an atheist, a Dr. Jeffrey Lang, and when I checked, it turns out he was a Muslim. He also claims, falsely I might add, that the scientific method originated in Islam. So he, he just makes that stuff up whenever it suits him. It's quite strange. And he starts off the name dropping with James Shapiro. For example, yeah. James Shapiro, he okay. is a um, Cambridge educated evolutionary biologist at the University of Chicago. Right. And he basically um, says that it's a religion. And let me show you right here what all this Muslim is doing is, I mean, is really it's stupid, a really bad idea. Now, number one, first there's a name, okay, attached to a qualifier that this is an atheist or secular atheist or whatever he considers to be impressive, where, I mean, secular is just to say that something is not connected to or aligned with a religion or a god, and atheist is someone who does not believe what a theist believes. So both qualifiers are superfluous and childish, and just trying to build up an emotional barrier. 
And then two comes the sentence S, where we can't immediately verify that person X actually said this S. And then number three, we also can't know why this sentence S was said, if indeed it was said. We don't have any information about the context in which S was said, or what data it is based on. And then five, we can't assess or check the quality of the data used here to result in this S. In all, a completely useless exercise, and usually just a primitive quote line, a single line which this subword does not even understand. He tries to read a scientific paper the way he reads the Quran, and that is why this entire exercise is so laughable. Oh, and Shapira only talks about a suggestion within a mechanism, not all evolution, and gets heavily criticized for it. And one critic spells it out. They're the misguided ideas of a contrarian who thinks that he alone has the key to overturning the modern theory of evolution. But that's how science works. It's supposed to extract criticism and alternative suggestions. It's part of the scientific method. But then you need to substantiate your grievances with adequate data, and Shapiro apparently has not done that and simply proposes an alternative viewpoint, which in itself is fine. And who knows, maybe he's right. And gene-based evolution will provide a better explanation of what we observe in nature. Except that right now, there's no evidence for that. But this Muslim bird brain can't handle that, because he's only capable of handling commands and obedience based on his Quran. His limited brain is not allowed to doubt and challenge, is unable to think along the lines of evidence and data, is unable to apply abstract thinking, can't conceptualize, and most important of all, is unable to activate critical thinking. Because the Quran prohibits it, telling Muslims not to ask where the answer might cause them problems. Now, Shapiro's question, what is the best way to deal with supernatural and science and evolution, is hardly making evolution into a religion. And quite the opposite. He states in an interview, and it is true that many of the comments on my blog reflect a deep reservoir of anti-religious sentiment. What is puzzling is that the only reference to a religion in connection with evolution I found was by Ben, a Ben Shapiro. So maybe the Muslim here mixed them up. And then next is Lynn Margulis, mm. she's again an atheist evolutionary biologist. Yes. Yes. She called it an Anglo-Saxon sect. This shows how desperate he is. I mean, the lady was brilliant and ahead of her time. That's why her work was only recognized after it was tested and found to make sense. So why would the opinion of a single woman make any kind of impact and be worthwhile mentioning and misquoting her on top of it? Because what she actually said is talking about conclusions, not evolution and not people, a minor 20th century religious sect within the sprawling religious persuasion of Anglo-Saxon biology. But our support does not understand that. I think it's actually quite clever. Now, there are entire pages on the net showing comments from all sorts of people who don't agree with some or other aspect of the theory of evolution for whatever reason. So why bother? How is what he does significant? I mean, he opened an entire YouTube channel just showing his stupidity. I mean, how does this impact biology? And how does it impact the existence of God? Why are single opinions of biologists or philosophers or whatever significant when it comes to the existence of his God? So what if they disagree in some detail with biology? Does that drive them to be Muslims? No. So what is his point? He quickly runs out of biologists too, and now has to restrict himself to philosophers. You know, the people who explore theoretical boundaries and don't do the actual work. By an atheist evolutionary biologist right. called Darwinism as religion. religion. So mm. he wasn't a biologist, he was a philosopher of science, Michael Roos. Right. And what he argues in that book is that Darwin's theory is a valid scientific theory, yes. but it has morphed into a full-out religion. Okay, and so what? Over the years, people have challenged Darwin and have shown where he made mistakes and have added on top of what Darwin concluded. A, by the way, a foundation which even today remains largely intact. To label this a religion is pretty thoughtless. What it boils down to is the definition of religion, where biology, in my eyes, simply does not qualify. Okay. Likewise, we have Peter Godfrey Smith, 
another philosopher of biology. He yeah. printed. He published a book with Princeton University called Philosophy of Biology. Yeah. He's does. He speaks about biologists are moving away from the tree of life, which right. we've been told is a fact, okay. to a web of life. And here he continues to embarrass himself, simply stating the obvious and whining about the usage of words and the graphical representation of a model. It's quite pathetic, I think. Evolution is different to Darwinism. Okay. Evolution simply means biological change over time. Darwinian Darwin, evolution yeah. is tree of life and the mechanism. Of and life. this, this Darwinism tree of life and the mechanism, this is hilarious, I think. I've told him, I explained it, and he still repeats this bull, this nonsense. The, the tree of life is a graphical representation of a model, and it's not a theory in itself. And the mechanism is what he assigns to evolution for some reason. The gradual changes over time which can result in changes within a species and the evolution of a new species all the time. Or this does not happen for obvious reasons. Remember the narrative they're telling us. They're okay. telling us it's as clear, it's no-brainer, it's as clear as planetary motion. That's okay. not probabilistic, that's an observation. Yeah, he can't understand science or evolution and then we dumb it down for him and he complains that we're dumbing it down for him using more colloquial and less accurate terms. Yeah, but it is quite clear. He quotes Darwin from over, I don't know, 150 years ago, saying that the windshield wipers on his Toyota today don't correspond with what Gottfried Daimler did on his first car, his, the first ever car. He then quotes Darwin and triumphantly declares, this is where it breaks down. Mm -hmm. And evolutionary biologists today understand that gradualism has largely failed. Okay, so that means we can kiss the theory of evolution goodbye, it seems. But hang on. Where, where does he get his valuable information from? University, research lab? No. It's a publication called Evolution News. I mean, it sounds science enough, but when you click on About, you see who is responsible. The Discovery Institute, the fundamentalist Christian creationist think tank. That's where our Sabur apparently gets this information from. Why? Why does he embarrass himself so much? Come on, this is pitiful. Why Why does he now talk about what actually makes science such a brilliant field where we don't know everything and go and try and find out? Instead of reading the Quran and saying, ah, yeah, we were created from a clot of blood or water or nothing or clay, but we know that for sure. <laughs> and then you're claiming as a Darwinist, right. Biochemistry, yeah. genetics, yes. anatomy, yeah. psychology, yeah. sociology, yeah. linguistics, yeah. biogeography, yeah. the fossil record, right. bioinformatics, yes. and every other sphere of bio uh, um, the subfields of biology yeah, can be are, explained. are in congruence leading up to one conclusion. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is now, I, I don't know. As soon as he doesn't quote someone and makes a statement all by himself, it's really a total, complete disaster. It's it's nonsensical and actually quite comical disaster. Why can't a more knowledgeable Muslim educate him? And why do so many uneducated Muslims simply agree and applaud instead of checking at least the basics? I, I learned way back in school that evolution is the change over time and can result in different species and then some detail, blah, 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 complete with examples, the basics. There's, there's nothing wrong with being ignorant about something, but then why make a fool of yourself? Is this support a fraud or someone who really wants to shed light on the field of science he sees a problem with? Now, my general and very basic education in biology tells me something is not quite right here. So I go and educate myself on this specific topic. And I immediately, just by reading a few pages, recognize that this support really has no clue what he is talking about. Now, I made a video where I explain evolution using the analogy of engines, cars, bikes, planes, etc. I also showed how evolution happens in nature and is best explained by the theory of evolution, where change over time by means of different mechanisms, natural relations, to better adapt to a given environment is probably the most robust and supported scientific theory we have. So we have mountains of evidence, and just because there are still details which need to be researched to understand it even better, does not mean you can dismiss the colossal amount of evidence from a huge variety of scientific disciplines. Darwin knew nothing of genetics or molecular biology. So there are areas where he was wrong or simply missing data. And we've updated those areas. Why would anyone in their right mind now go and criticize Darwin? He did a marvelous job and others have updated what he found using our more modern technology. There's not enough of a gap here to try and wedge in a god. 
where there is zero evidence, nothing, zilch, nada. It's just a make-believe fabricated fairy tale. And now at the nine minute mark, he makes two interesting observations. Yes. The very first thing I'll point out, right. without even knowing any science, okay. is... So let's be clear, he says that he will point out something without knowing any science, and then continues to say... Okay. That is impossible because science doesn't proceed like that. Now, this is the level of incompetence you get all the time from this useless guy. His point is that data has different interpretations. And so what? So forfin what? I mean, he, he, how would he know not knowing anything? First, he says he doesn't know anything about science. And then he says science doesn't work like that. How would he know if he didn't know anything about science? This is crazy. Okay, different interpretations. And so what? If I see tire tracks next to a corpse, it could be that a guard put them there to confuse me, or they were made by a truck, an aeroplane, a car, a trailer, a murder bike, or an alien spaceship, who cares? Or even painted there by a film crew shooting a movie. So there's different possibilities, sure. But further scientific investigation then narrows it down more and more. And as we eliminate some explanations and find corroborating evidence for others, we arrive at a very limited set of possibilities. And then those can even lead to a plausible explanation and even truth. And I suspect that reading the Quran and frantically slapping the corpse with a piece of steak, as is suggested in the Quran, will not yield meaningful results. But this Sabur will stop at the first option, God did it, and stop thinking. Then he will deride all those who start thinking at this point, looking for more natural explanations using their brains. Quoting <laughs> atheists. I mean, this is what he does. He will now quote atheists, say, ah, oh, the marks can't be two centimeters deep or made by something else than rubber. It's pathetic. And at the same time, it's actually quite sad. But I, th but I think the reason why people get confused is because they conflate science with truth. Right? No, you klutz. There is no confusion. Truth is what compares to and can be verified in reality or through logics. And that is precisely what science does. It shows the probability that something corresponds with reality and thus correct and the truth or can't be reality and requires a rethink. Not absolute, not objective, ultimate or whatever truth, just the truth. Okay, which is verified by reality and that is available to us here and now. If I make a scientific claim, by the way, like a car travels one kilometer in 60 seconds, it is thus traveling at 60 kilometers an hour. Is this true, the truth, yes or no? Will this scientific conclusion based on the data likely change in the future? <laughs> Here's another gem showing that he does not understand the first thing about science, not one bit. Right. Science gives you workable models about reality which are falsified. Mm. It doesn't give you truth with a capital T. Models are not necessarily and always falsified. What's he talking about? And yes, if I divide distance by time, I get speed, the true speed, the honest truth, and it doesn't get any more truthy than that. So scientific models are falsifiable. They can get updated. No, science does not keep changing. Models and conclusions might, but not all of science and not everything connected with science. What a stupid idea. Is it the case that here, for example, chimps and human beings have the same sociological, uh, are, there, are their behaviors more similar from a sociological perspective? Okay, our little creationist is now asked about the same sociological behavior of chimps and humans. Since he has no clue what he's talking about, he doesn't answer the question, but talks about homology. Homology is an assumption. Again, wrong. We have homology, for example, very similar bone structures in the human arm and a bat's wing. This is an observation. It's a fact. They are similar. The wings of insects, however, are the opposite as they developed independently and are analogous. Homoplasy is the common feature in different forms. Okay, it's like you get flight in a, in a bat and, and an insect and a fly. But our Muslim apologist does not understand this. Instead, he claims that scientists are using circular reasoning. Now listen to what this fool says here. Similarities are due to common descent. Right. And then claims he's not claiming this, but others are. Claim. I'm not claiming this. I'm going to give you an example of someone who points this out. And then provides this example. Okay. Ronald Brady, he's a philosopher of biology. Yeah. He's a mainstream secular academic. He published a paper in a journal called Cladistics called on the, or, um, on the Independence of Systematics. And what he goes on to say is this, this line of reasoning is circular. 
does the guy really write this? No, of course not. Whatever, whenever you check, I mean, whatever, whatever he says, you check it, you find, nah, it's wrong. Or he doesn't understand or what it says or, or both or whatever. Now, this Ronald Brady writes on page 10, Huxley writes, okay? It's, Ronald Brady writes that Huxley writes, on the other hand, if, if it were important because of Adam, which procedure reduced to his principle would give us patterns in nature are important only when covering theory says they are. And he said, and then Huxley says that the circularity of this thought gives rise to the unhopeful rhetorical monster of real theoretical basis grounded in biological justification. Okay, you can, you can think about this, but it doesn't matter. But then he says that Darwin was right. So it seems our Subo again does not understand what he's doing or what the source actually said, where he copied it from. Or maybe the, he copied the conclusion was some, from some Christian who didn't get it. What is quite funny and quite kind of embarrassing is when Hijab mentions... And you've, and you've debated Aaron Ra. Where in reality he was spanked hard, he was schooled, completely demolished, and he was shown that he knows nothing about evolution or science in general. I'm surprised he didn't go pale or red or whatever at the memory of this. Yeah. Naturalism is everything has to be explained. Naturally. Naturalistically. Yeah. Hence why Darwin said if there was no fossils, it'd still be true. Right, because it, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. because The assumption is, so this is really axiomatic now. Yeah, of course it is. It's incredible. So now it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Now we get to another area he does not understand, naturalism. He simply can't grasp that this is not an assumption or a decree or a conspiracy, but a conclusion based on reality. Demonstrate something supernatural to me and naturalism is out the window. It's that easy. But simply claiming that, for example, slapping a corpse with a piece of steak will revive it, will not persuade me, even if it says so in the Quran. And the rest is now certain, 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 like they can't. And this is something I've observed in my many years of working with Muslims in the Middle East. They have great problems with abstract thinking on con the, the conceptualization of things, okay? They need the certainty and precise instructions, literal instructions. If you instruct the guy to ride diesel fuel and no smoking in Arabic on a tanker, this is what you get. And Sabur suffers from exactly this shortfall. As a Muslim, I believe it to be a valid theory, plausible theory. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not absolutely true. That's how ridiculously stupid this is. Plus, of course, his ancient superstitions based on his book. And as if it makes it better, he labels evolution a religion which, in my eyes, only degrades his own Islamic belief system and the way of life based on the God of Islam. And he uses strange vocabulary like people believing in evolution. And it gets quite sad when he gets down to Stalin now. Mm -hmm. Stalin read The Origin of Species. That led him to atheism. When he killed people, he said that he thought he was doing natural selection. Of course he's wrong. This is what it really was. I don't know if I should I read the whole thing. On the one hand, Stalin himself was a self-proclaimed Darwinist, and Soviets did hold that natural selection, materialistic evolution, was correct. However, the Soviet philosophy, okay, this as implemented by Stalin, basically said that no natural science could impinge on the domain of the state, which is to say the science of Marxist-Leninism and its economical, historical, political representation of the domain of mankind, which is to say social Darwinism would have been completely unacceptable, as would be eugenics. Or any other place where you might try and make the move to say, because nature tells us X about humans as creatures, we should organize them in a different way than the Marxist Leninists might tell us to do. Okay? So it makes no sense what he's saying. In Stanford, they did an experiment about social conformity. And they put three lines on the board. And here he brings up an experiment which explains, to a certain degree anyway, his wasted mind and why he believes what he believes. Because it's down to the easily manipulated human brain in a peer pressure situation. Two. 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 Uh, two. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence. I don't think he even realizes that he just explained his own brainwashing. That's why I constantly test my beliefs and question my convictions. Does Subur or the clown next to him do that? Ah, but, but we need to be realistic too. We can't beat nature. Just like a swarm of birds, we adjust and fall in, even denying our own perceptions and our freedom. It's part of the evolutionary process. So I am not free from making mistakes and not free from misconceptions.
But unlike the Sabur, I am willing and able to correct them when presented with the evidence. Sabur can't even conceive of doing so, as it would go contrary to what his God allegedly dictated to Gabriel, to Muhammad and his merry men. So, all in all, this is, this is a failure. The whole video is about a clueless, hopelessly deluded guy rattling off names, unable to go and challenge biologists, where he then goes to Speaker's Corner, or he goes to YouTube to peddle his pitiful product, which is doubt. And that's all it is. It's ignorance, lack of education, and the inability to use critical thinking, which results in him trying to make others doubt nature and take on his immoral, brutal doctrine instead which kicks human rights to the ground. But let me be very clear. If he were to provide evidence, tangible and convincing evidence, I would change my mind and follow where the evidence leads me. Subur and the fool next to him will not. Okay, and then we get the summary by the guy on the right, which, if it were satire, would actually be quite funny. But alas, I fear he's being serious. Ah, There's nothing more to add, is there? Thanks for holding out. I'm going to stop here. You go watch the video and then see what you think about it. Thanks for taking interest. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If don't, give me a thumbs down. But actually, do me a favor. Tell me why. What you didn't like or what, whatever. Tell me what I could do better. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Uh, his argument depends on erroneously redefining terms. Uh, because it is my opinion that my opponent is at a disadvantage in that he doesn't really understand the words that he's using. And uh, also quote mining academics out of context, not so much in what they, in taking the sentence out of the paragraph, but in not understanding the meaning surrounding what they're saying. And I'm sorry, Sabor, but you've, you've given all these citations of things that you don't understand, like the bush of life, the web of life. Okay. You keep citing experts that you think disagree with me, and they don't. You don't understand any of the experts you're talking about. So? You asked me a question that the way the question was phrased is nonsense. I corrected the question and gave the correct answer. I can't because what you read doesn't help your case and you don't understand that. Are you saying that my opponent is quoting from scientists <laughs> when he doesn't understand what they're saying? I'm afraid so. Well, you see, you keep saying that, but the citations you bring up don't agree with you. I'm, this is why I'm convinced that you simply don't understand the arguments that you're reading. What do you mean by that? Like, how do I account for it as a yes. Muslim? How do you account for it? You. You're, you're asking as a Muslim, right? So I'm, I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm a Muslim, so I'm <laughs> I believe they exist. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say, well, you, as a Libra, it, it doesn't matter. Just ask, <laughs> ask me the question and I'll answer it.